to John Hanna, who served as national security advisor under former Vice President Dick Cheney, and Denton Cinquegrana, Opus by IHS Markets Chief Oil Analyst. And I will start with Denton because market and investment reaction here is rather significant. To what do you trace the real catalyst? Is it the location? Is it the fact that they were energy oil tankers? What? Yeah, I think that it's tankers. The pictures are pretty spectacular to begin with. That's a real choke point like you described. A lot of oil and refined products, petrochemicals moving through that region. So again, it's it's a pretty spectacular uh, vision right now. And that's created a little bit of a, a little bit of short lived panic. But nevertheless, uh, oil prices were really coming down and now they're they're kind of floating back up. Uh, John Hanna, uh, I hold in my hand an article by Foreign Policy magazine entitled What a War with Iran Would Look Like. Uh, they're writing this because some are wondering, is this uh, an act of war? Well, the thing about the Iranians, Liz, is that they are masters at operating in the gray zone. That is the space between peace and war, beneath the threshold of a kind of attack that would automatically trigger some kind of U.S. military response. It's asymmetrical warfare. Uh, and therefore, it makes it very difficult for the United States to figure out, are you ready to risk war because the Iranians are uh, doing damage to foreign oil tankers outside the Straits of Hormuz? Puts us in a difficult position, but we've got to look at a full suite and menu of options on ways that we can continue to impose pain on the Iranians and make sure that they know they will not get away with this with, with impunity. Denton, uh, we're looking at this scene that is, is obviously alarming. However, uh, just a month ago or within this month, we saw four semi-similar attacks. And what we're understanding is that these attacks were pulled off by something called limpet mines. Limpet mines are magnetic mines that attach themselves to the hulls of ships. Here's, here's a picture of them. I mean, they go way back here. And once they attach, they then explode. Uh, named after the sea snail that attaches itself like a barnacle to, to a ship hull. These are obviously, Denton, um, something that they could trace rather quickly. What do you yeah. think eventually happens? Does this sustain the, the oil price being pulled out of a bear market? Um, you know, again, oil, like, you, like you described, inventories are moving higher, not just here in the U.S., especially here in the U.S., but, but globally as well. Uh, one of the things that may keep prices from really kind of spiking is the fact that there's, there's a lot of global demand growth concerns going on, uh, stemming from potential slowing economy, uh, trade wars, things like that that's going on. OPEC this morning came out with their monthly report. They pulled back on their projections for oil demand growth. The EIA did it earlier this week. Our parent company, Opus's parent company, the IHS market is pulling back on their demand growth expectations as well. So I think it's that com the combination of uh, growing inventories and expected slower demand growth that's going to keep prices from, from really spiking. Well, it, it is a policy issue, certainly, that matters to these markets, John, because Shinzo Abe, the prime minister of Japan, timing is very suspect here. He was in Tehran trying to act as peacemaker with the Iranians between the U.S. and uh, Iran because Japan really needs Iranian oil. And right now, the U.S. has slapped sanctions on Iranian oil and any country that buys it. Uh, do, you, do you get the sense that uh, President Trump is going to move on this? Because he just tweeted in the last hour, yeah, no deal. We're not ready to make a deal or talk to Iran about removing these sanctions. Well, I think this decision by Secretary Pompeo to go out and pin the blame immediately and very squarely on the Iranians has certainly raised the stakes. Uh, there's talk that the U.S. will go to the Security Council. Hopefully it can present some compelling evidence mm -hmm. and share some intelligence both with our, our European allies, our allies in the Middle East, as well as with the United States Congress to really get the American public and the international community ready in case we need to uh, go up the escalation ha ladder here and take much more aggressive actions to, to let the Iranians know that this series of escalatory steps they've taken in just the last several weeks, this is only maybe the fifth or sixth incident that we've seen over the course of several weeks, yeah. that the Iranians have got to, to stop. And, and there's this headline, the Saudis are now on high alert. In fact, we have the Saudi energy minister saying that uh, Aramco, which of course is the state-owned oil company, has increased its readiness to deal with these attacks. 
specifically to provide guaranteed um, oil supplies to international markets. But we've got some Navy ships as we finish this discussion sure. up, Denton. Yep. Navy ships in the region, if one of those limpet mines attaches to a U.S. ship, denial or not from the Iranians, we got a problem here. At that point, probably all bets are off okay. as far as prices are concerned. Denton, John, great to have you here.